Benedict uh, Pope Benedict then took it and ran with it. And it's called the third edition of the Roman Missal and not the Sacramentary. Because each country had its own sacramentary. Now, this is the third one in such a good way that because I had no idea that it was John Paul II's traveling yeah, all around yeah. right. that started all of this. Right. So. I really like the one and so it's not really supposed to go into effect to Advent of 2011. Advent of 2011. So will there be parishes doing it earlier? No, no. Uh, shouldn't be because that's what every, that's what the bishops are saying. No, no. You know, this whole year and a half or so is for catechesis, for education, for holding workshops, you know, in your parishes and dioceses and all that kind of stuff. Right. Sending out literature to all the families, all of that, so that by uh, the first Sunday of Advent of 2011, everybody's ready to go. But no, Parish A shouldn't be implementing it. Parish B, should, you know, is not. Parish C okay. is. All at the same time. All at the same time. Well, then my question too, because I had heard that they weren't going to have allow any more music. Like they weren't going to be allowed to use any songs that had Yahweh in them. The word Yahweh. I had no. And you weren't going to be allowed to use any songs that focused on I, like Amazing Grace, like that saved a sinner like me. Well, I had heard that too, but they didn't say anything like that. They didn't say that. But see, for example, and I love Amazing Grace. In fact, we had it at St. Tim's this Sunday. Um, but that's really not a very liturgical song. Yeah, it's actually an old Protestant yeah. song. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think what, what we're going to be focusing in on more is just liturgical songs and not necessarily praise and worship songs. Right. You know, that's for praise and worship, like the XLT style. And it has a great place in our in our worship. But in liturgy, there are certain things that need to be done. In some of the old hymns, like How Great Thou Art, you know, we love to sing that, yeah. but that's really not liturgical. That's a wonderful hymn, but it, it's really not fitting in with necessarily the past or the history. It's focusing in on the, on the awesomeness and the grandeur of God, which is wonderful, but how does that fit into, and most of the time it doesn't. So I think that's one of the things that, that they're going to probably look at. But all of the but all of the mass parts will have to be rewritten because none of it will fit. So yeah, somebody's going to make a ton of money. Yeah, yes. tell Matt Meyer to get busy. No, it's not those guys that are going to make a ton of money. No, it's it's J C Pollock and yeah. Benziger yeah. with the missalettes and all. I mean, all. Oh. oh yeah, because you're going to have to have it printed out. Well, absolutely, because nobody's going to be able to, to walk in and just do it, because a little thing like, and with your spirit, instead of an also with you, Right. I mean, it's a little thing, but right. it's a, part of a major, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But see, the thing is, and, and with your spirit, is the exact translation, and in, in, the, in the Spanish, it's Econ tu Espiritu, not Econ Ustedes. It's not with, you know, and also with you, it's with your spirit. So it's, it's more of a uniform thing. Universal. Well, actually, it sounds type. more beautiful. Yeah. You well, know? you know it is, and you and say I was. In the creed. Yeah, yeah. It's it is more beautiful. And as I said, especially the colic, the opening prayer, the uh, prayer of the uh, at the gifts, and then the closing prayer. They're very beautiful. They're poetic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. But it's not like if you look at the at the at the prayers that we use now, the opening prayer. They're just very simple. Right. And they're fine, right. but it's going to be kind of a jarring thing for us right. to go into this more poetic yeah. way of saying We'll get used to it. <laughs> we will get used to it. I said we will get used oh, yeah. to it. Oh, yeah. And, it, and it's fine. You know, oh, yeah. it's, it'll be fine. Well, but there was a lot of negative that I, I had heard. Nothing but negative. negative. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm thinking, in yeah. Like, yeah. even my pastor had said, you know, there's going to be changes. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not so sure about that. 
again, they didn't say anything. The only thing that I knew was just what I said about right. the hymns that are beautiful, but right. maybe not in the church. The prayers, the prayers at the offertory and the, and the post communion prayer are really very beautiful. The, the, the language is a little different than we are accustomed to in the United States. Is it more old English? Or is what? Is it more no, old English? No, it's just more um, formal, I would say. And and the, the plus, of course, for us Americans, that's a minus because we don't know. Right. But the plus is every English-speaking country will be using the same translation. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. And so there were a lot of questions, well, why did they choose this word, why did they choose that word? And he was so good, he said, you know, fathers, I don't know. <laughs> he said, it came down to, this is what the word, this is the word that the Pope wants. And so that's, that's what we use. Yeah. And then he had a great sense of humor all the time, which is great. He said, you know, in 40 years, we could all change back again. But right, right. now, this is what's going on. But we'll have to, the, the fortunate thing is the catechesis for the new Roman Missal uh, has been very, very good because it's not going to come out until uh, Advent of 2011. So we have more than a whole year oh, to okay. prepare. Okay. And there are a lot of um, there are a lot of, of, of aids that are being uh, published right. that I'm going to send all the parishioners, and then we'll probably have to have something like a, a missalette, like the old missalettes, right. for a while, so that people can read because the holy, holy, holy has changed. You know, the glory has changed, right. not completely, right. but right. enough right. That, that it would. Yeah, you have to. You know, even the creed has changed. Instead of we believe. It's I believe because in Latin it's credo, which is I, uh, Ramus, which is we. Right. So it's just it's that kind of exactness that I think uh, John Paul II saw as he, he traveled around. Right. You know. Right. In, in Australia they have one translation, in England they have one translation, in Canada they have one translation, in the United States they have another translation, and it's not the same, and right. it should be the same word. Right. So. But what about, like, how will that affect our mass as far as, like, light team and the different music? Is music, I thought they were changing. Well, the music has to be completely rewritten as far as the parts go, the parts of the mass. Okay, is it only the parts of the yeah. mass? It's not the normal? Okay. At least that's not what they were saying in the, in the workshop. There may be, they, you Who know, they've been the talking. Who led the workshop? Been, pardon me? Who led the workshop? Uh, a team from the National Council of Catholic Bishops. Okay. And as I said, they were really, really good. But uh, there have been talk, there's been talk for years and years and years about having um, a hymn. Book. But that really hasn't gotten much off the ground. No, I, so I, I don't think, think it, I don't think it should should bother us much at all. Okay. 